Lubrication may seem simple, being only about reducing friction, but there is so much to gain by managing lubrication. Setting up the right approach and the right practices. It's about energy saving, as poor lubrication means more energy must be used to drive machinery. It's about preserving resources, making sure that all parts function as intended and as long as possible. For example, around 36% of bearing failures are due to poor lubrication practices. And if we add contamination, it is about 50%. I think lubrication too often is taken as granted. Maybe because it's everywhere or it's a bit of a show. Everyone knows it can be sticky and smelly. But let's take an example, say a paper mill. It can have 10,000 lubrication points, sampling ports, etc. On average, one lubrication point needs four to five different tasks to be covered every year. So we are talking about 40 to 50,000 tasks per year. And all of them need to be performed correctly. Now lubrication becomes interesting, something we can address from a corporate standpoint, but also an exciting technical challenge to rise to. If we can make repetitive tasks easier, then we are making lubrication more effective and even more important, safer. This is what lubrication management is about, making the most of every part of what we call the lubricant life cycle. First of all, you need to select the right lubricants for your machines. Then, you need to acquire them by selecting the right vendors who can deliver on time and with the quantity needed. These lubricants won't be used immediately, so the way they are stored is crucial as they can quickly degrade and get contaminated. Then, the lubricant is transferred to the lubrication tool and lubrication systems. Here, it will be exposed to the atmosphere and can easily get contaminated. So the way how this transfer occurs is really important. Then the lubricant is applied to the lubrication point, but how? By hand, using automatic lubrication systems, and how do you control that the lubricant goes where it should go? When the lubricant is inside the machinery, it will hopefully lubricate. But how do you make sure that it lubricates well enough? So a monitoring phase can be considered here, and if not, corrective action should be taken as early as possible. In the end, the lubricant will be used up and needs to be replaced. The monitoring step can let you know better when this change has to occur. But this raises the question about what do we do with the used lubricants? Do we collect them properly and avoid them being released into nature? And there are also ways to reuse them or recondition them instead of just burning them. All these steps require skills and the lubrication technicians and personnel should be equipped with the right skill sets and by removing the routine and the low added value tasks and replacing them by more problem solving or proactive activities, not only the job would become more interesting or attractive, but it will also positively impact the machine uptimes and conditions. To make this happen, we like to spend time with our customers to assess their unique situation at a detailed level and come up with solutions from the selection or storage of lubricants to the disposal and reuse. We constantly strive towards innovation. For example, by digitalizing our products, services, it leads to a better visibility on the current situations, better decision, better tracking of KPIs, and it enables also our customers to be more efficient, more effective, and more sustainable.